space and staff to the volume of pending cases and several other considerations. A mobile application of virtual webcasting has been launched for the benefit of the accredited journalist who can now log into the virtual court hearings and report the cases with much more ease and promptitude. A portal by the name of Daily Disposal Statistics has been launched to monitor the daily disposal and reduce the undated cases in the districts. A new website of the State Judicial Academy has also been launched. All undated matters pending in the High Court have been mainstreamed and actual dates are being fixed in each case. By now, 1,20,000 undated matters have been listed and taken up by the roster benches. All daily orders passed by the High Court have been directed to be uploaded on the website of the court, preferably within one day, for the convenience of the lawyers and the litigants. Foundation stones have been laid for raising the construction of a basement plus ground plus three-story building for housing 50 lawyers' chambers, for setting up a, a child care center and a medical unit within the High Court complex. All these milestones could not have been achieved without the wholehearted support of my colleagues and the untiring effort of the registry under the able guidance of the Registrar General and his team of registrars, joint registrars, deputy registrars, assistant registrars, and the court officers and staff. I would be failing in my duty if the contribution of the members of the bar goes unmentioned. The legal fraternity has been at the forefront to support the disadvantaged members of the bar, both financially and materially, and have extended all necessary cooperation by continuing to appear in courts virtually from March 2020 onwards. It has not been an easy task, what with frequent power outages, bandwidth issues, and lack of internet facilities. It is commendable how many lawyers have become tech savvy in this short duration and adapted themselves to the new normal and so have the judges. The High Court and the subordinate courts have now resumed functioning partly physically and partly virtually. While keeping a constant watch on the situation that may arise on account of the anticipated third wave, it will be our sincere endeavor to restore normalcy and conduct courts physically as soon as it is feasible. I would like to conclude by quoting the words of the jurist Nani Palkiwala, who said thus, the greatest task before India today is to acquire a keener sense of national identity, to gain the wisdom to cherish its priceless heritage, and to create a cohesive society with a cement of Indian culture. We shall then celebrate the 15th day of August not as the day of independence, but as the day of interdependence. The dependence of states upon one another, the dependence of our numerous communities upon one another, the dependence of many castes, clans upon one another, in the sure knowledge that we are one nation. Drawing inspiration from these words, I wish you all a happy Independence Day. And I pray that the Almighty gives us strength to overcome the challenges that are thrown our way. May we continue nurturing the spirit of democracy and rule of law and uphold the Constitution of India. Jai Hind.